Hello and welcome to the last part of the um, Painting Buddha Academy uh, about how to paint um, a Cigna Warjack, as you can see here. Uh, this is all what we have come up with so far, with the gold parts and the metal parts and also the armor. So it is a very good basis for uh, what we will do now, which will be a very simple OSL effect. Yeah. For those who don't know what OSL means, it means Object Source Lighting. <laughs> uh, they are different, uh, actually, things that I've heard also, like original source lighting. And it is basically the theory of objects that emit a light onto your model. And with that, they influence the surrounding uh, proxi proximity or the surrounding area. In this case, we thought about um, painting his head here uh, with a uh, like an orange glow. Uh, so this will really help to uh, distinguish where the face is. Uh, yeah, kind of also it. will give it like a nice uh, additional highlight point. After the face, we will also um, paint uh, some of these uh, bulbs here, uh, which are meant to be, uh, you know, energetically charged so since this is a stun blade or stun sword uh, or energy sword um, yeah we will paint these with a light blue I think mm -hmm. yeah really nice okay so let's get right to it we use the big brush for the first step mm. and here on the palette you can see there is some uh, vermin brown here this here is some fury orange uh, and some this is some uh, yellow choose just any uh, reddish brown and uh, orange and for the first step, um, we mix the vermin brown and the the fury orange to more or less similar parts to give a like a brownish orange. You can see here. And with this, we um, apply something that is not a really a wash uh, nor a glaze. It is something like a Generous uh, first, uh, well, area glow, so to say. We apply this um, reddish brown pretty generously here uh, at this grill area that mm -hmm. he has as a face, face grill. Here. Like that. And also around the visor here that he has. Yeah, uh, I first uh, was a bit surprised that you chosen the uh, the large brush for that, but uh, you can see already quite nice uh, where the pigments uh, collect in, mm -hmm. like in, in the dark places. It's quite orange, and it still has on the upper surfaces that you touch slightly with the brush. It's uh, got almost like a glow already. Yeah, and that's the thing um, that uh, it has to pool. Usually, it's not so good when 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 color pools. But in this case, it's good because um, the pigments really, as Ben uh, just said, uh, they, they pool in the little area here. But also you have this surrounding uh, color here, which yeah. is exactly what we are uh, aiming for. Okay, um, now we just uh, allow this to dry. And for this, it's actually not so good to use the blow dryer because it will just push the, the pigments, pigments in. in some direction. Yeah. So we just wait. <laughs> There's nothing as exciting as watching paint <laughs> dry. So. Okay, and now we switch on to, from the big brush, uh, we switch on to the smaller brush. This is the uh, Winsor Newton uh, Series 7, miniature series uh, 0, as you can see here. So um, the smaller brush will help us to, um, obviously, to be able to work more <laughs> precisely. And here we take the pure orange. And uh, yeah, as before, the, the area that was marked down um, was a more general area. What now will make this look like an OSL effect is that we will um, have to draw in some very sharp lines uh, with light, actually. So um, rather than just go with the white, uh, as in rust effects, for example, we will now go and draw in some very fine uh, orange lines. Yeah, also an important thing you have to uh, keep in mind when you paint uh, OSL is that the actual 
a source of light is always the lightest point and so it's quite nice that you now have the, the darker wash kind of uh, like an ambient light around it and now just really paint the, the source of the light. Yes. So yeah, it's really important that you that you really distinguish between the two. Um, as Ben said, like one one is the amb ambient light, occlusion light, or something like that, and the other one is the sharp light that you actually see. Yeah, the actual source. Yeah. Even the visor. Yes, like that. Maybe the middle one needs a little more color here. Yeah. Yes, like that. Okay, and um, the next step would be to use um, yellow. Here you can see that the sunburst yellow. And what we will do now is just to uh, continue the uh, yeah the step that we have done before. Uh, we we'll just try to be a tiny bit uh, smaller. Smaller, yes. That's it. We have to um, to paint this on. Yeah, well, on the the orange, and we're getting smaller and smaller as we. Proceed with the highlight. Yeah, really nice. Also, it's good to. Um, to paint the yellow twice because it's not a very um, opaque color, opaque color. Yeah. so you need to um, yeah to, to do it twice to um, to really get some uh, well, impact impact yeah. yes okay and also here Yeah, now you also see why it was good in the beginning to really to to use this this light this ambient uh, this well yeah more like ambient light this diluted uh, vermin brown so it really really starts to glow and the yeah the the light source itself is very very punctual and very on the spot for the next step we mix some uh, skull white with a little bit yellow we don't go for the straight white because first of all it doesn't look very um, uh, natural and second thing is we want to keep the very last point for corrections uh, that we apply at the very last minute so you never know it's good to to, to, to have some room on top yeah. yes, yeah. and with this contrary to the to the step before with this we will only place uh, light points only two points and yeah will be much better so also not too diluted actually um, yeah, like that, and only two points. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's really, really glowing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
much. If you make a mistake, use your gypsy brush to quickly erase it as if it had never happened. <laughs> Yeah, you see that's why it's good that we have not used the white. Uh, I think now only maybe some some very very last final highlight there might might work. But yeah, uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it. Uh, looking really really awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think at a little point. I mean, just right there in the front. And the very front, <laughs> which is difficult on cam, but let's see, try. A little bit like a like a gem, like a gemstone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah really nice. Okay, and uh, that's about it. I mean, you could still go in and, um, for example, if you were not so precise here. You could go in with a brown and then correct here the lines a little bit uh, if you went overboard. Yeah. But um, yeah, for this, it's yeah. Sometimes if if you just really gone overboard, you also need to correct things with metals. But here in this case, it looks just perfect. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, so on onwards to to the blade and the and the blue, and the blue magic light. Yeah. The visor obviously it will have a blue color and um, on the left you can also see the difference between oxidations and uh, the OSL effect. Yeah, because we, we talked about that uh, while he painted uh, this piece uh, off cam, uh, the top part, uh, that it's really quite, uh, quite dangerous if people uh, try to just glaze in the, the highlights that they easily look like oxidation, especially on the if you have the the blue here, uh, together with the greenish oxidation of the copper. Yeah, yeah. So we will show you both. <laughs> yeah. Why not on the back side of the blade here? Since this is still untouched. <laughs> so the first step is we will mix some ice blue, which is here, um, with some dark sea blue, just a little bit, similar to what we did with the vermin brown and the, the blazing orange. To a medium blue tone, I would say. All right, no, it's actually light blue tone. Yeah, it's quite like uh, typical sky blue that you would imagine. Yeah, and this will be again the ambient light that we will now uh, place. In the case of these uh, bu bubbles here, it is actually that the light would not come out too far uh, from it. Um, I don't want to, for example, cover all of it. It wouldn't make yeah. first of all, it wouldn't make sense, and secondly, it would uh, look like a badly uh, made oxidation effect. So we just place them right in the middle here, and um, yeah, allow it to float a little bit on the top, but not too much, like uh, mm -hmm. here and also here. And again, it's uh, not so. Um, it's a little bit diluted and uh, not. Yeah. Uh, it's heavy. quite nice. You can see it quite good actually on the cam how it pools in the, just on, around the edge there. Yes. And uh, now we just have to wait until this is dry. And again, no blow dryer, just wait until. Yeah. Again, we switch on to the smaller brush. And uh, now we take just the pure ice blue. Not too thin again. And with this we sketch in the uh, where the light will bounce off. So in the case of these orbs, it is that they will be in the middle. But I will not cover the middle entirely. Uh, I will leave a little um, of the previous color on the lower side. A little yeah, bit like so you, you use it as a shadow already. Yes. A little bit like with gemstones. And the next light will come from the lower side here. It will be the brightest light that will bounce off of these uh, sides, actually. Yeah. 
Okay. That. Now we will take some more Daxi Blue and mix it with uh, with the base tone, so to say, with the base blue for something like a shadow. And with this, we will mark in uh, some shadowy areas also. Let's say here from the lower side, opposite of the, the light side that we placed down there. And also a little bit here on the lower side, just to yeah, to, to make the shape more visible. Yeah, you can also dilute it and then give it a very gentle wash here, like that. So it floats also in the <coughs> in the um, yeah, just in the corners. Yeah, in the corner. Yeah. Okay. For the next step, we mix some sky white with the blue to create a. Brighter blue, that, mm -hmm. and with this we try to um, to mark down the, uh, some very very small uh, highlights in the blue that we have placed before in the light blue here. And with this we can actually play a little bit uh, with the with the surface that we have created uh, before. We can add either um, like spheres by drawing. Uh, like a like a crescent, or we can just dab uh, to create something like a, I don't know energy yeah, particles yeah, floating like around. Particle glow. Yeah. Not so here. Just a bit. Like this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even more white. And now we is that now pure white or is no? It's not a pure white. It's um, it's still with the blue. We will keep the pure white for the well, yeah, as a backup for if we need to add even a higher highlight somewhere. But we will uh, look at that uh, a bit later. Yeah, I see glow is already. Yeah, already it has a lot of depth. It's really nice. Mm. I think now I will now we'll go in for the for the straight white. The the last highlight is there to um to bring in the, the very last reflection point uh, similar to what happens on uh, gemstones or glass. It's just it's a very, very bright highlight and it uh, makes it just look more sharp and very yeah. uh whole, so to say. Okay, so we place this bright light tone. Just a little dot, <laughs> and you actually have to <laughs> have to find the right uh, timing because it dries off your brush very quickly. Yeah. Just place it like a little yeah. dot yeah. right there, just like a gemstone or something like that. I also place it rather in the in the dark uh, part there. Yeah. So it's uh yeah you see. Yeah, so you have maximum contrast. Yeah. yeah. Also maybe a little bit here, just one quick dash here. There. And there. But that's it. Yeah, really nice. What we will do now is the very last step, the weathering of the uh, yeah well of the brass, mm, and also to show you the difference between these two. For this, we uh, take some jade green that we have here on the palette. It's a very nice color actually. It's like a like a turquoise, but very pure. Yeah. 
bit more more on the green side. Um, it's one of those cards. It's not available anymore, but um, a good uh, color that um, that is pretty similar to that is uh, Scaly Green from uh, Game Color range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with this, we we cover the um, we give it a wash uh, from the lower side here. So you see it gets this uh, greenish tint to in the, in the shadow area. Before this is entirely dry, we um, mix some more jade green with some white. And uh, this time around, this time around we place it at the at these areas here that are kind of in the shadow area, but that are exponent, uh, more exposed to the light. More exposed, like here, here, and maybe here. It's a little bit like rust. Um, and also, we allow it to float here in the in some of the um, crevices. Yeah, like that. Yeah, the best thing I think uh, about ex oxidations is that they are very, very nice uh, examples out there. So just have a look, you know, study it, and then uh, you will see where to place uh, oxidations, where it will look um, natural. It's also good to use the gypsy brush to, uh, for example, here, pull the uh, color off the surface again if you go a bit too white, like here. Also here, so you see, you can pull it uh, down uh, again. It works really like, a bit like an uh, like eraser. Yeah, and and the good thing about it is that the, you see the oxidation will still stay in the in the crevices in some of them. Yeah. Um. So that's where we want it actually to be. I like that. Okay, now we switch on to the smaller brush again and um, mix some scaly green with some uh, sky white. So it gets pretty, pretty uh, light. And with this we go in and draw in, like follow the, and we draw this into the, the, the crevices that have been marked before with the color that floated in into them, if it makes sense. So, so yeah, you just exaggerating what they what the pigments did before yeah, so yeah. yeah. Maybe here yeah. and hello okay Okay, and um, since this looks a bit uh, bright now at the moment, I have also here some um, from the Vallejo model wash, the green, and some um, some tank brown, uh, some brown ink again. It gives us some some nice yeah. brownish green tone, and this we can use to tone down the. Uh, the lower areas here and also here. These, this part here, uh, to increase the contrast. Yeah, also to get back a bit of the depth that you had before. Yeah. Uh, also to make the the shape of the metal part again more readable. Yeah. Also here, you can go in with some of the jade green with some sky white. Uh, if you find places where you will add just a little bit of the weather of the oxidation just do it yeah. like that and you have to you have the oxidation there okay but uh, that was really good that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it actually this is how we how we do this <laughs> okay. Uh, okay yeah so um, that was basically it for the OSL part and the small oxidation part. Um, you can see 
there is another example here of uh, something that looks like um, I don't know, like a plasma grenades that are glowing with a, with a more purple uh, shine. Uh, you can do you can really experiment a lot with different yeah. colors, with purple, with um, greens, with blues, uh, some oranges. So just <laughs> some oranges. Just go uh, and try it yeah, out. Try yourself. it out. Yeah, so um, the very, very last step that we will do now is uh, that we will add some barbed wire to the base. Um, I think uh, we have prepared something here. Uh, it's a barbed wire that comes from uh, ModelMate. It's um, actually one of those uh, NATO type barbed wire. If you look yeah. uh, closely, maybe you can see it. It's not the, the barbed wire with the little uh, spikes, but with these. Uh, Look a bit like razor, yeah, razor blades. Like razor blades, very, <laughs> so very this, disgusting. Yeah. So it's really nasty stuff. So yeah, we will attach it here to the base, um, and uh, then we give it a small wash with the with the rust effect. I think. Yeah, but that should do it. They have a nice steel tone, and if you you just yeah. as you read it on the model, use uh, real metallic paints that fit just perfect. Yeah, I really like also the. Um, the idea of this filigree of this very you know, fragile material here and then the big machine like uh, raging on top of it yeah. someone uh, asked in the comments for some of the previous videos about the, the pose of the warjack and how mm -hmm. to achieve a you know floating pose like that yeah more dynamic more fighting like yeah that. and actually the what i use for uh, for achieving my, like to to see which pose i would like to have is uh, i use the blue tag actually can use the blue tag to um, do a mock-up actually of your of your pose. So what you do is you take um, all the parts out of the sprue, you clean them just uh, well, according bit. to to the way it should be. Yeah. And then you yeah, and then you put these in the for example here the, the joint sockets yeah. and just try it out. Really, I mean you can then uh, take the whole model and um, position the arms, uh, yeah. position the legs, and did so you, on. Did you, was it uh, necessary to do uh, any cuts or tr a transformation on the wall, or um, not necessarily uh, cuts? Uh, I th I was thinking about cutting the the legs because uh, the legs were very static. But what I ended up doing was to um, take some uh, boiling water, actually, and you can see it here. The foot is a little bent yeah. down. Um, yeah, this was achieved with just uh, boiling water. Since this is resin, it would yeah. also work with plastic. Not so much with metal, obviously, but. Um, yeah, um, little modifications like that are are, are very useful and uh, and important actually. And then um, also pinning was not necessary here with this model because uh, it's plastic, it's very uh, or resin, it's very light. So you just attach it with the blue tag. Then you remove like w once you are happy with the with the pose, you start to remove certain parts and glue them on step by step. Yeah. While oh, you can also take take just a picture with your cam and just maybe yes. Uh, and you know how to position it, it and then just glue everything. The problem with the blue tag is a little bit that it has some, some volume to it, and with that, um, the parts will not fit exactly as they did with yeah. the blue tag. It's a bit frustrating yeah, because yeah. you end up with a really nice pose and you start off, you know, <laughs> taking it off, and then suddenly it doesn't look just right as it did before. But maybe that's just uh, yeah, just take a little blue tag, yeah, it helps. It's just imagination, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, just uh, yeah, this is the way to achieve uh, poses like that, and um, yeah. Actually, also, it's a question of balance. Um, yeah, I mean, if he has a, if he's standing like his on it, this leg, yeah, yeah like it's like down here. It's a little bit like a dance through the through the gravel, but just try it out. We might um, we might show it in, uh, in another video another video how to how to do it if you are interested. So please, uh, if you are interested in that, comment on below um, if you want to see pose posing of models. Uh, we will be very glad to do that. Okay. Okay, um, if you want to glue uh, barbed wire like that, you will need a couple of things. Um, first, of course, you will need some super glue, and super glue we have placed on the tip, on the on the bottom of this uh, shot glass here. Um, actually, it's very advisable, obviously, to um, never try to glue st things directly on your base. Yeah, with the with the bottle. Yeah, it yeah. will end in the disaster, and that's <laughs> for sure. It will be a catastrophe. So. Always put your super glue on something, and preferably it's nothing uh, made of plastic because the super glue will uh, the super glue will attack the plastic, and uh, then you might end up uh, with some weird acting super glue. 
Uh, next thing you need is a little uh, pin uh, like this one here uh, so you can take some of the glue and put it on the model. And the third thing is some um, super glue accelerator. accelerator. Yeah. yeah, this one here. We use the uh, super glue accelerator from Styler, Styler Master in this case. Um, it, it just has to be one that activates the Ciano acrylate. Yeah, it's it's really important. Uh, just last week, uh, I ruined one of my precious Winsor and Newton with a uh, nice super glue. Have, so have you been trying to glue, uh, to put the glue on with your brush? <laughs> almost, almost. Okay, yeah, yeah be careful. Uh, it's really, really <laughs> super glue is is, is is really dangerous. So after removing the barbed wire from the sprue, what we did here was just to take a um, just a pencil. And then wrap it around the pencils so we have this curved um, look to it and then um, yeah just stretch it out and um, we will place this uh, piece uh, down here yeah that barbed wire is really nice it's uh, it's uh, like brass etched or, or like metal etched mm -hmm. stuff and uh, it's I think the scale is one to uh, forty eight. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they also have it as a plus model, mm -hmm. and I think it's so amazing because if you touch it or if you wrap it around the pencil, it's almost behaving like yeah. really barbed wire. It's just like yeah. not getting off the pencil. You can really uh, get caught in it, and it's really dangerous. Yeah, the so. first time I worked with it, I tried to wrap it around my finger. Oh, that's a bad uh, idea. It's not, a, not a good <laughs> not idea. a good idea. No, <laughs> that's not <laughs> because yeah, you will entangle yourself in it. But uh, yeah, you see, you just place it uh, in this case. Uh, you see, I just placed it here. Also, obviously, thongs are very good to kind of position it, uh, like here. Yeah. But um, yeah, basically, I like it like that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, nice that it kind of, you know, all these little um, these little shards of the barbed wire that make these reflection points really help to make the space uh, even, even better. Yeah. So yeah, once we're happy with the with the position, we um, take the, the the pin, some of the some of the super glue, and then we try to find places where the barbed wire connects to the base, and they are not so visible. In the best case, because there will be a little, um, you say, a little um, super glue nose or spot around them. Yeah. You will have just a tiny bit, uh, like a tiny uh, glue spot that you will see. It will be glossy and so maybe even too much in. So very quickly, we take a little bit of paper towel, remove the cess, and then we have the activator. It comes with a little brush, and we place it near the glue spot. And we just blow it, and that's it. It's already yeah. cured. You can see it here. I, I love the the accelerator. Yeah, yeah. Some of the constructions are only possible with it. I think um, it would be a really pain in pain in the in the jambalaya. In the jambalaya, <laughs> it would be a pain in the jambalaya not to have uh, the accelerator for some uh, model. Yeah, definitely. It's also good to turn the base around like that to see if the composition is good, but I think it came out really well. Uh, really like this little situation here, um, this little swirl. So yeah, that's an amazing, I think an amazing, uh, very, very flippy, uh yeah, composition. Yeah, finish. yeah, really nice. So yeah, let me check if uh, all of them are if there are other spots that I can glue, um, glue this barbed wire on, and then we will continue um, with camouflaging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hiding, uh, hiding the, the hiding what we did. The glue, the glue spots. Yes, we will do that in a second. Okay, that's it. So next step is to cover all the glue spots up that we have uh, created. Yeah. So and the the perfect uh, color for that will be our trusty rust effect. You still know it from the from the weathering part, and the good thing is also to sometimes uh, let your colors open for some while. That way, you see um, some of this stuff here has gathered in the top, and it reacts actually differently than uh, the other 
other stuff that is mixed down yeah, here. Yeah, especially with those uh, special colors like the rust or oxidation colors. Uh. Yeah, yeah, the, it's really good to to have different parts in your pot with different states of uh, dry dryness. Yeah. So what I do now, I scoop some of this uh, very. If you can see here the the thick stuff down, mix it a little, dilute it a little bit with what's in the lid. Yeah. yeah. And now I just go, uh, and now I just go in here at the spots where it has touched, and um, yeah, go from the lower side of the barbed wire and try to to just leave it, um, leave some of the rust effect. See, like that. Yeah. Can I swoop it off here on the lower side? Yeah, so not all over the, the barbed wire, but just uh, where the well, water would, will collect over the, the time. Yes, and also on spots where it's too uh, bright. When I, yeah. you know, when I tilt it around, I see that you see it also here. It, it is, um, you know, lighting up. So when I want to eliminate some of the sparkles because they, um, they would draw too much attention from the model, I can just put some, like here for example, I can just put some of this uh, effect here and it's, it will get... Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot. Tone down. down. Yes. Yeah, also here directly on the on the blue spot, and then remove the like clean the brush and then remove the excess down here. You can also um, you can also you you can also place some directly here and then just pull it down so it looks a bit like um, like some. Yeah, like leaking, leaking rust. Yes. Yeah. Like that. But you can already see it's it's really it's nearly gone, you know, the, the blue yeah. spot. So yeah, there was another one here. But I kinda like the do you see that? Yeah, the the oil yeah. the oil yeah. one on top yeah. of the very orange rust part. Yeah, I kinda like that, so I think I will leave it. Looks a bit like uh, I don't know, some kind of grease or something. Grease, yeah. yeah. Also here I removed some um, some even thicker material from the from the residue from the from the um, top and um, since this color you know it it is a little bit like um, you can see it here yeah. <laughs> these like these little gunks uh, it leaves these chunks of of, of color and they tend to uh, dry out um, like real rust. Yeah, you can see it on the on the big beam back yeah. there. Here, th this was just the color. Yeah, which is pretty amazing, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was the thick part of the color, and it really looks like like real rust. Mm. Although it's um, it's really difficult to do foresee how the color will uh, set actually on yeah. the, on on the model. So we just basically will see what happens when this is dry. But uh, let's hope we get a really nice rusty finish. Okay, but uh, I think I will, you see what it's uh, all about. I think I will just continue with that and we'll be back for I got that this is finished dry. model. Yes. Okay, and this is how how it looks now after drying. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, the the barbed wire didn't dry out as, as rusty or like as uh, mud as we th thought it would, but I think it's still, I mean, if you look at the here, the little brown tones that uh, yeah. that are now like flashing through. It's really amazing, and the whole base is really uh, comes comes out as one. Yeah, thing. now the the whole project looks really nice, really well balanced between filigree parts, massive parts, a nice dynamic, uh -huh. uh, awesome details. It's really nice what you uh, made out of that kit. Really, really astonishing. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed it as much as we uh, watching this video as uh, we had uh, fun painting that. And um, yeah, we hope to see many variants actually of uh, the War Machine projects now. Uh, yeah. 
similar to that or with different uh, from different factions and uh, yeah li please uh, leave um leave some some comments uh below if you want uh, to see more yeah, of that if you want to see more or have any suggestions all right thanks a lot for tuning yes. in also um, thanks to ben for his expertise and his uh, great advice uh through over this video and yes yeah it was fun all right as always share and enjoy goodbye Hey.